Okay, so last time we were talking about wireless spectrum. So we saw that um, we learned a bit about how radios work. So we learned about modulation. We showed that uh, what you could do is you could multiply um, any signal that you wanted tr to transmit by a carrier frequency. In other words, a sinusoid with a given frequency, which would modulate that signal up into some frequency band. And then we showed that by doing the same procedure, multiplying by a sinusoid with that carrier frequency, uh, and then low-pass filtering, you could extract that signal. We also showed that if um, if the signals are band limited, in other words, they're limited in frequency space, you can transmit more than one signal. Um, so this led us to the to the discussion of wireless spectrum. And last time we said um, the available wireless spectrum is from. So what's available is, uh, for practical purposes, probably from about um, 1 megahertz all the way to about 100 gigahertz. Uh, but on the bottom end, uh, bandwidth, or excuse me, uh, the availability of, of spectrum is limited by uh, the size of the antenna that you need to transmit. And on the top end, it's limited by um, the components that you need to <coughs> oscillate at 100 gigahertz. And ultimately, uh, on the top end, it's limited by the absorption of the atmosphere. Beyond about 300, 300 gigahertz, um, the atmosphere starts absorbing, um, starts absorbing wavelengths higher than, uh, excuse me, starts absorbing frequencies higher than that. Uh, so we will probably never have wireless communications at, at significantly higher than 300 gigahertz, or at least not over significant distances. Um, just uh, so to reinforce my point about um, the size of the antenna at the low end, I don't know if you've ever uh, driven past. Uh, so on this end, it's, it's uh, one megahertz is about so is about the frequency that's used by AM radio. And uh, it's in the same frequency range as is used by shortwave. So um, there used—I don't know if it's—I don't know if uh, there still is one, but there used to be a large. Um, uh, the CBC used to uh, used to have a shortwave uh, transmitter somewhere in New Brunswick uh, to transmit um, what was called Radio Canada International. And th this would be basically a, a broadcast that would go around the world from this transmitter at around uh, two megahertz or so. And the transmitting facility was basically on a huge football field with these enormous towers. Uh, similarly, if you've ever seen uh, an AM radio station transmitter, it's usually a huge antenna farm with big towers. So those are the kinds of antennas you need to transmit efficiently at low frequencies. Um, the wireless spectrum is basically divided up as follows. So uh, what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you the name of the band, the um, typical frequencies in that band, and the uses, typical uses. So at the very bottom end, we have um, what's called ELF, SLF, and BLF. Generally here, um, F stands for frequency, E stands for extra, S stands for super, B stands for very, and L stands for low. So this is uh, extra low frequency, super low frequency, very low frequency. And this is these three are up to about 30 kilohertz. Immediately above that is LF, low frequency, which is from about 30 to 300 kilohertz. So at these frequencies, as I mentioned, 
Um, efficient transmission requires enormous antennas. And furthermore, uh, if you consider if you consider this, the, the frequency, if, you're, if your carrier frequency is 30 kilohertz, then the most bandwidth you can possibly hope to have is 30 kilohertz, because that's where the that's where the center of your band is. So uh, on either side of that, that's the most bandwidth you can possibly have. So on these low frequencies, there's very little bandwidth and so very little room to transmit information. For that reason, these extremely low frequencies are generally used only by the military and for navigation. So navigational beacons tend to operate at these very, very low frequencies. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Military uses, um, as I mentioned last time, one of the properties of these super low frequencies is that they penetrate seawater a little bit, so you can uh, you can use them to, to communicate with, with uh, submarines underway. Okay, up from there we have MF, medium frequency, which goes from 300 kilohertz up to about 3 megahertz. And in that band, um, the most interesting application is AM radio. Uh, so think of the think of the AM radio stations you may or may not listen to. Um, 680 News, um, things of that. 680, that's 680 kilohertz. That's their carrier frequency, and that's in the middle of that band. Um, up from there, HF, high frequency, and that's from 3 to 30 megahertz. Um, typical uses there, shortwave radio. Next up from there, VHF. Very high frequency, 30 to 300 megahertz. Um, this is, at one time I guess you could have called this the most used band. Uh, here we have FM, FM radio. Um, that go with an FM radio station, I don't know. Uh, Um, like 103.5 or something, 94.1, that's CBC, um, classical 96, that's uh, 96 megahertz, 94.1 megahertz, so that's in this band. Um, TV, uh, usual analog TV, rabbit ears TV is in, is in this band, uh, and that's, I think that's just a bit above, uh, above the FM band, in the, probably around 150 to 200 megahertz. Uh, also in this band, uh, a lot of point-to-point point-to-point point -point communication. Their traffic control communication is in here, um, like police radios, fire radio. Um, used to be if you bought a walkie-talkie, it would be in this band, uh, things like that. Up from there, UHF, ultra-high frequency. 300 megahertz up to 3 gigahertz. So in this band we have more TV, but this is also the first band in which we find cell phones. Um, also in this band, uh, this band is incredibly important for modern communications 